Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my review of The Road to Oz by L. Frank Baum. So, uh, this is a book that I buddy read with Joel Swagman. We're slowly going through the Oz series. And, uh, yeah, as always, I'm going to go and read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. There's going to be a lot of mentions of love magnets in this. Dane reads... Are you going to Ozma's party? Princess Ozma's birthday celebration is set to be the most magnificent party of all time, and everybody who's anybody in Oz is desperate for an invitation. As for Dorothy and her friends, lost out in the lands beyond the deadly desert, they must use their heads and discover a way to get back to the Emerald City if they're to be in attendance on this most special occasion. But will they manage to get there on time? Well, they would get there immediately if uh, Princess Ozma just used her magic belt that can summon people. And I'm not sure why she didn't, but hey ho. So, first mention of the, the love magnet, and it comes after this quite profound comment about money. Money, declared the shaggy man, makes people proud and haughty. I don't want to be proud and haughty. All I want is to have people love me, and as long as I own the love magnet, everyone I meet is sure to love me dearly. The love magnet? Why, what's that? I'll show you if you won't tell anyone, he answered in a low, mysterious voice. There's so much, like innuendo that I'm reading into this for the love magnet. I'm sure it's not supposed to. So again we get Button Bright took the shaggy man's hand willingly for the shaggy man had the love magnet you know which was the reason Button Bright had loved him at once. Every time there was a mention of the love magnet I just had these very bad thoughts. Uh, we get a fox captain who bangs a drum and the drum goes boom boom and I'm just thinking of Basil Brush because Basil Brush was a fox and his catchphrase was boom boom. I wonder if they got it from this. Probably not. And then they meet Polychrome, the daughter of the rainbows, and she goes, and what is your name? I'm Dorothy, and this is my friend Shaggy Man, who owns the love magnet. He had to be Shaggy Man as well. Had to give Shaggy Man the love magnet. So we learn how the rainbow's daughter got on the lonely road and became lost. Why, my father stretched his rainbow over here this morning so that one end of it touched this road, was the reply. And I was dancing upon the pretty rays, as I love to do, and never noticed I was getting too far over the bend in the circle. Suddenly I began to slide, and I went faster and faster until at last I bumped on the ground at the very end. Just then, father lifted the rainbow again, without noticing me at all. And though I tried to seize the end of it and hold fast, it melted away entirely, and I was left alone and helpless on the cold, hard earth. And they go into a city, and the, uh, the shaggy man says, Never mind, as long as I carry the love magnet, every living thing will love me. Right, old ladies, ma'am. And then they meet a guy who does music, and he's not very good at it. And um, we get, Poor man, said Polychrome, he can't help it. What a great misfortune it is. Yes, replied the shaggy man. We are only obliged to hear this music a short time until we leave him and go away. But the poor fellow must listen to himself as long as he lives, and that is enough to drive him crazy. Don't you think so? Don't know, said Button Bright. Toto said bow wow and the others laughed. Perhaps that's why he lives all alone, suggested Dorothy. Yes, if he had neighbours, they might do him an injury. That's why I live all alone as well. And then these sort of enemies of the grief are going to turn them into soup. And Dorothy says, hush dear, we don't any of us want to be soup. But don't worry, the shaggy man will take care of us. Will he? Asked Polychrome, who did not like the scoodlers at all and kept close to Dorothy. I'll try, promised the shaggy man, but he looked worried. Happening just then to feel the love magnet in his pocket, he said to the creatures with more confidence, don't you love me? You know, I, I'd keep the call the thing in my pocket, my love magnet as well. Got barred from a pub though. Then they go to visit Nick Chopper, the Tin Man, who is also the Emperor of the Winkies. So we get a familiar face. And but he goes, money, money in Oz. What a queer idea. Did you suppose we are so vulgar as to use money here? But I'm pretty sure in one of my previous videos they were using money because I was po poking fun at the idea of the Oz dollar. We do get this great little bit of alliteration and wordplay here. Um, so it's a merry meal, but Polychrome ate little and the host nothing at all, because Polly didn't get her mist cakes. I'm sorry the Rainbow's daughter missed her mist cakes, said the Tin Woodman to Dorothy, but by a mistake, Miss Polly's mist cakes were mislaid and not missed until now. And we learn about the differences between the Tin Woodman and TikTok, the Machine Man, and it goes, goes uh, I think this is really profound. You could love the Tin Woodman because he had a fine nature, kindly and simple, but the Machine Man you could only admire without loving, since to love such a thing as he was as impossible as to love a sewing machine or an automobile. Yet TikTok was popular with the people of Oz because he was so trustworthy, reliable and true. He was sure to do exactly what he was wound up to do, at all times and in all circumstances. Perhaps it is better to be a machine that does its duty than a flesh and blood person who will not, for a dead truth is better than a live falsehood. And then they go to Jack Pumpkinhead's private graveyard where he has like tombstones laid up for all the pumpkins that have spoiled. But I thought nobody ever died in Oz, she said. Nor do they, although if one is bad he may be condemned and killed by the good citizens. So they do die. I guess they don't die of natural causes. 
They just die like the guy who got torn apart by the invisible bears. Although I don't think that was in Oz. That was in a different fairyland. And we get this line when Dorothy introduces the hungry tiger. Uh, another profound line. And this is the hungry tiger, continued Dorothy. He says he longs to eat fat babies, but the truth is he is never hungry at all. Because he gets plenty to eat. And I don't suppose it'd hurt anybody, even if he was hungry. Hush, Dorothy, whispered the tiger. You'll ruin my reputation if you are not more discreet. It isn't what we are, but what folks think we are that counts in this world. Never more true than in the social media era. And then we get the shaggy man getting all dressed up to go and meet Princess Ozma, and I quite enjoyed this. For a time, the shaggy man gazed upon all this luxury with silent amazement. Then he decided, being wise in his way, to take advantage of his good fortune. He removed his shaggy boots and his shaggy clothing and bathed in the pool with rare enjoyment. After he had dried himself with the soft towels, he went into the dressing room and took fresh linen from the drawers and put it on, finding that everything fitted him exactly. He examined the contents of the closets and selected an elegant suit of clothing. Strangely enough, everything about it was shaggy, although so new and beautiful, and he sighed with contentment to realise that he could now be finely dressed and still be the shaggy man. His coat was of rose-coloured velvet, trimmed with shags and bobtails, with buttons of blood-red rubies and golden shags around the edges. His vest was a shaggy satin of a delicate cream colour, and his knee breeches of rose velvet trimmed like the coat. Shaggy cream stockings of silk and shaggy slippers of rose leather with ruby buckles completed his costume, and when he was thus attired, the shaggy man looked at himself in a long mirror with great admiration. On a table he found a mother of pearl chest decorated with delicate silver vines and flowers of custard rubies, and on the cover was a silver plate engraved with these words, The Shaggy Man, his box of ornaments. We get this line, they're referring back to um, the guy who couldn't help making music, he doesn't get invited to Princess Ozma's birthday, and they say, When music is not very good and is indulged in all the time, it is better that the performer should be alone. It's also why I'm single. And then we get this savage put down from the Scarecrow because they're talking about Button Bright. And Button Bright got his name because his papa said he was as bright as a button. And uh, the Scarecrow says, your papa may have been right, but there are many kinds of buttons you see. There are silver and gold buttons which are highly polished and glitter brightly. There are pearl and rubber buttons and other kinds with surfaces more or less bright. But there is still another sort of button which is covered with dull cloth. And that must be the sort your papa meant when he said you were bright as a button. Don't you think so? Don't know, said Button Bright. We get an introduction to His Gracious and Most Edible Majesty, King Doe the First, ruler of the two kingdoms of Highland and Lowland. And I thought that was great to begin with. And then we later learn his name's John Doe, which I like even more because that's the name that are given to like missing people or whatever, or bodies that are found and they don't know who the bodies are. And Santa Claus is there as well. Not explained why, he's just randomly there. So yeah, The Road to Oz by L. Frank Baum. I didn't think it was the best, in fact I think it's the weakest of the Oz books that I've read so far. It just felt a little bit formulaic, and I think part of that is just because, I mean, there have been five, six books now in the series, so I think Baum was kind of starting to run out of ideas a little bit, but that doesn't bode well for the rest of the series, so I hope it does pick up again. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, it was okay. I mean, nothing much happened, they just go to Oz on this lots of, like long road trip. When all along, Princess Ozma could have just wished them there by the magic belt. So they, they might as well have just done that. I don't know why they, they didn't, but hey-ho. So yeah, uh, it's alright. Uh, I am looking forward to reading more of the series. I just hope it does um, pick back up again. So yeah, there we have it. That's what I made of The Road to Oz by L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think of this book if you've read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. I am off to go and fondle me love magnet. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.